So three things about our investments approach. Um, one, that when we're looking at interventions, we work on innovation, and we've been of recent supporting governments with scaling up of innovations at um, national level and at provincial level. Our work has always been underpinned by RD&E, research, development, and evaluations. And more recently, we've been paying a lot more attention to how we make use of the information and the learnings that we get out of the research and the evaluations that we do. Um, you asked us about um, what are deal breakers and assuming that um, strategies are aligned and due diligence is completed, um, what we are saying is that our work is all dedicated for public good and working in public schools. Um, the notion of knowledge sharing, and that's at the level of developing open education resources, but that's also at the level of a commitment to sharing from lessons of the different interventions. Now, that's built into our contracts, but I know it has to be carefully curated. Otherwise, you have headlines like grade three teachers can't pass a vocabulary test. So we understand that when we want to share, we have to look into how we give those messages, but there's a commitment that we have to share knowledge and learn from that. The partnerships, and I suppose we've been talking about it as collaboration earlier, and I want to say that it takes time and it takes money, and it doesn't happen organically. And we have to be respectful of particularly NGOs' time in that collaborative approach. One we've learned when we have interventions that are too complex, they're just too difficult to manage and to learn. Multi-layered, multi-grade, multiple target groups, um, throwing everything at the school. It's very difficult to see what works and what doesn't work. And in fact, some schools have said to us they just feel inundated and not able to deal with the interventions. We've also been very idealistic. When we started off, we thought we could do so much good by going into the three provinces um, that are the poorest provinces and working with um, schools that needed interventions the most. And that iceberg is really about saying um, there are a lot of um, underlying factors to educational change in, in the classroom. What would we do with 500 million? And I was thinking Xenex and not government here. What we would invest in is more materials, and particularly materials in African languages, and we would pay attention to initial teacher education, particularly around um, foundation phase teachers and teachers that can teach in the African languages, and we would like to explore more an internship model of um, training um, uh, foundation phase teachers. And then lastly, what would we say to President Ramaphosa? And that's not because I wrote, and that's not because of my age, but I would like to say to him, giving every child a tablet will not solve the reading problem. It merely put text under glass. Thank you. <laughs>